Okay. Well, I uh, would like to thank you to thank all the organizers, especially especially Addison uh, Motor for putting together this uh, um, unique uh, conference. Um, so I would like to start by saying that uh, the Nobel Prize in Physics in 2007 uh, was uh, awarded to uh, Peter Grumberg and Albert Furt for the discovery of the giant magnetoresistance effect. This is a, a drastic change in the resistance properties of certain materials upon the presence of a magnetization field. So um, that led to a new field in physics and engineering um, that some people call spintronics. Um, so instead of, the idea is that instead of manipulating the charge of the electron for developing novel technologies, um, that we can also um, manipulate the, the spin of the electron. Um, so there is numerous applications nowadays. Um, IBM, for instance, that develop a, um, new um, um, uh, magnetic headers for memories that are that are exploit the giant magnetic resistance effect. So another application is the is what is called the nano uh, spin torque nano oscillator. So these are essentially uh, three layers of ferromagnetic ma of um, magnetic materials, and under certain conditions, which I will describe briefly, um, the the electrons start to spin and they process, and as they process, they um, they generate um, uh, microwave signals. So Albert Firth conjectured that um, that it, one could create networks of these nano oscillators, so that we could harness the microwave signal for practical applications. The power that comes from just one single nano oscillator is very small for practical applications. So I'm going to describe to you how uh, with some of my collaborators from Spayward and Luciano Bono, we solved the problem of synchronization that have remained open for many years. So we'll, I'll start with the network configuration some, and I'll show you some simulations and the uh, symmetry based analysis that we did that help us to, um, overcome some of the challenges in understanding the synchronization. Um, so th these are a list of some of the collaborators. Uh, theoretical work is mainly with Luciano and all the experimental work is with the uh, space work group uh, locally here in San Diego. Um, and these are some of the students and postdocs that have participated in related projects. So here's the, the uh, descriptive picture of the spin torque mm -hmm. nano oscillator. On the left hand side, you see that there's three layers. One is a fixed layer, a spacer, and a free layer. So a current is applied. The electrons in the, in the current, they are completely disoriented. They are non-uniformly oriented. As they hit the electrons in the fixed layer, the, ele the electrons from the current become polarized, and that generates a, a polarized current. As the polarized current then hits the free layer, the electrons in the free layer start to spin and they precess. So the precession is the one that leads to um, microwave signal. One single nanobar can generate um, about 250 picowatts of energy. Uh, that's insufficient for any practical applications. So in 2009, uh, the first experimental work that showed that, that, that confirmed the amount of energy that was emitted by a single nano oscillator was conducted at Army Research Labs. And so in that experiment, it's about the energy is about one nanowatt. Uh, nowadays, um, with different materials, it has reached about picowatts. So the goal for practical applications is to create a network that can reach about one milliwatt of con uh, collected power output. So the mathematical model that governs the uh, spin of the electron came from very various uh, different contributions. At the beginning, it was just um, the precession part. So the gamma is the gyromagnetic uh, ratio. M is the basically, as you see in the previous picture, M is just the um, 
demagnetization, um, and one can show that this um, uh, vector can be normalized to one. And then uh, H affected is the applied field that is applied to the uh, ferromagnetic to the ma uh, magnetic material. Then there are different ways that we can also introduce the damping of, of the electron. Um, this is called the uh, uh, this particular form is called Gilbert damping. And then um, in later years, uh, Sloshensky at IBM um, modified the revised the equation to introduce the the spin uh, torque. So this is the torque that is transferred from the electrons coming from the polarized current into the the free layer. So um, A is basically the uh, where the input current, so the coupling that occurs in the in in the ferromagnetic materials is basically through this element A. So here's um, <clears throat> um, a possible configuration that have been considered by various groups. Uh, we can um, connect the, the nanobulbs in series, or we can connect them in parallel. One can show that that parameter A in the um, LLGS equation is just proportional to the input current, to the polarized current. This formula for the resistance on the, um, on the individual, each individual I nanobulb comes from the basically, the, this, this is essentially the discovery of the giant magnetic resistance effect. So when theta i is equal to zero, the electrons are in parallel. Um, and when theta i is equal to pi, then they're anti-parallel. And so that produces the, the uh, uh, drastic change in, in the resistance. So um, a little bit of the electronic circuit leads to a, a revised version of this coupling parameter. And then what we do is we use the stereographic coordinates to project the 3D um, dynamics into onto a plane. And so where Z are just um, um, the complex uh, version of the coordinates. So we can identify the South Pole with the uh, point at zero and the North Pole with the point at infinity or all the way around. That's just a, a, a basic uh, uh, assumption. So that is to these network equations. And as you can see, one of the original, uh, the equation is not in polynomial form. So one of the challenges and the approaches that we, we used before was just the standard dynamical systems approach where we try to expand this polynomial to center manifold uh, reduction or lyapunov schmidt reduction and then uh, normal form. But uh, still the equations become very untractable. So we needed to figure out a different, uh, a different approach. These are some just simulations so that you can get an idea. Um, this is for um, uh, simulations for up to uh, three nano oscillators. Um, so this is um, where they are, are synchronized. Uh, so there's different regions where we obtain synchronization. There is traveling waves. And as you increase the number of nano oscillators, you, you get the full classification coming from the symmetry. And let me take a, just a step back to uh, emphasize that in this equation, the coupling occurs right here on the uh, IDC term. So IDC is the constant DC current that comes from the, the, the circuitry. And you see this summation is from one up to n. So the network inherits an SN symmetry uh, that will be critical for the analysis uh, of the stability regions. So what we were interested in, in is in translational research work that we can in, identify which regions of parameter space the synchronized regime exists and in which region is stable. And we would like to do this for arbitrary network sizes so that the engineers can take that information and build the experimental device and then to do all the testing to generate a microwave signal at the nanoscale. So we, we complexify the network equations. We group them together in just a standard form. Um, we can show that uh, there is a common uh, equilibrium Z0 uh, n times. And the, as I mentioned, uh, the isotropy subgroup for this uh, solution is just Sn. 
that comes from the all-to-all -all coupling. We compute the linearization um, of the entire network dynamics, uh, where we just have the, the, the standard uh, blocks A and, and B that comes from the internal dynamics and all the, the coupling that occurs from node two to node one, node three, and, and so on. So then um, computing the eigenvalues, eigenvectors of that original uh, uh, matrix, it, it's a very um, a, a tedious task and it's, it's very complicated. So we employ the SN isotypic decomposition of CN so where V1 is just the vector of the space where the synchronization regime occurs, and then we have the, the orthogonal vector of the space uh, that in the literature has been identified as Zn0. Then, um, so we can show these are the absolutely reducible representations of the group, and then we compute the, the standard basis um, for um, these, these two vectors of the spaces. So we have A is equal to zero, the basis for V1, and then the remaining uh, vectors are for uh, the orthogonal group. So we put together um, a uh, transformation matrix P, and then we, we, we know that the, the, um, the transformation matrix P will lead to a diagonal version of the linearized matrix, where the A plus N minus one B block corresponds to the synchronous state and the A minus B corresponds to all the symmetry breaking um, bifurcations that lead to other patterns of oscillations. So to do the nonlinear analysis, so our goal again is to find the loci of where the system um, will lock into synchronization. And so we translate the equilibrium to the origin. And then we apply the matrix uh, P, just the standard transformation, to rewrite the V system after the origin has been shifted to uh, zero. And then, then we get the linear part and the nonlinear part of the, um, of, the C, of the network equations. So originally, after this step, we were trying to, um, without too much success, just trying to do the, the complete center manifold reduction and then do the, uh, the stability analysis, but again, the, even in, in Maple, um, the tasks were uh, very difficult. Um, so then uh, Luciano made a, a critical observation that helped us um, get back into the right track. And he said, look, you know, the center manifold um, is actually um, located on the fixed point subspace of Sn. That's a word subspace V1. So we don't need to do the actual uh, center manifold in the entire space. So um, we can just focus on the U1 variable. And so, and that's, that's what we use to then calculate the criticality. So then once that we, we focus on, on that, we solve implicitly the equations that will provide the loci. So on the left-hand side, we have the loci of the half bifurcation that leads to the synchronous state. And we're able to follow this implicitly for a network, I mean, we just show it here, uh, up to a thousand oscillators. Then with the nonlinear analysis, we calculate the criticality of the half bifurcation. And then we use the, um, the, the, we, we use the eigenvalues transferred to the synchronization manifold to ensure that we have a, um, a, a locally stable synchronization manifold. And, and we, that's how we arrive to this picture in red are the curves where that synchronization manifold will be locally asymptotically stable as a function of the input current. And this is the angle of the, the applied magnetization field. So the last step, just to uh, conclude my talk because my time is up, uh, we put all of that together and we run some simulations where we actually added noise into the system. We found that the system is actually rather robust up to plus minus 10% of noise, and, and the system actually goes into the synchronization regime. So this is a simulation with about up to a thousand of these nano oscillators. Um, so the ongoing work is now the experimental work that is conducted 
um, at Space World uh, Labs and also at another lab in Romania that we just started the collaboration. And I'd like to finish with one last note. Um, we are uh, organizing the fifth international conference that brings together experimentalists as well as people doing theory in nonlinear dynamics. So in 2018, it will be held in uh, the first week of August, and it will be in Maui. For those of you that never visit Maui, uh, this is an opportunity to bring the family. Thank you so much.